Hello everyone, <laughs> I am D-Machine and I'm creating this video because to be quite honest I want to share some of my ideas, I want to talk to you guys, I want to get some of your feedback and there's so much happening and I'm so excited and yeah and I wanted to talk about it so that's why I'm making this video. Now you might notice that my apartment is completely trashed and I sound a little funny and that is because I am moving and my microphone stand is away and I'm literally just holding my microphone so I do apologize for that and thank you for watching and putting up with it but um so so I, I want to talk about a few things the first thing I want to talk about is Legion that is gonna be amazing and I'll tell you why um, if you know who I am and you know what I do I am the creator of GCD TV and my life essentially for the last few months have just revolved around competitive uh, arena and Legion makes me so happy and for a million reasons and I'm sure all of you could probably guess the reasons if you're familiar with uh, Legion but maybe I could share a little bit of insight on what I'm thinking and maybe you didn't necessarily pick up on that as well so the first thing I want to talk about in Legion is the talent system so the talent system the PvP talent system first thing I think of is awesome separation from PvE this is amazing now we've been talking about separating PvE from PvP for uh, I don't even know how long guys since forever haven't we we've been saying it forever and we've known a lot of the the reasons for um, the balance issues of the game forever and it's because we share this game we share this game with other people who have other interests in this game this game is 50 games in one it is not just one game it's not like for example World of Warcraft is a growing esport and if you were to look at some other esports the biggest ones being Dota and MOBAs and stuff like that those are just one game and the developers have to worry about just one demographic that's it it's the competitive players I mean, there's uh, there's probably other parts of it, but that's the main focus of that game. Uh, look at World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is not one game. It's a million games. And PvP, honestly, isn't the main attraction of the game. And if that comes as a surprise to you, don't feel bad. Because it was a surprise to me, too. Uh, I, I don't know. For whatever reason, uh, when my friends, when I was 12 years old, and my friends were saying, yeah, we're going to go play World of Warcraft because RuneScape sucks. Yeah, we were all playing RuneScape at the time, and then one of my friends got a PC um, that wasn't terrible and started playing WoW, and we're like, okay, this is way better. We're all going to play this game now. It's so much better than RuneScape. And so when we jumped into World of Warcraft, um, the first thing that we all thought was, oh my gosh, is there a wildy? Now, if you're not familiar with what RuneScape is, uh, a wildy is basically a place where players can attack one another. And I guess my competitive nature and my friends and me were always just fully interested in PvP. And <laughs> when I got to max level and I got uh, involved with, the, with PvP and arenas and stuff like that in um, Burning Crusade, um, I didn't think there was another part of the game. <laughs> I really didn't. I mean, I knew that there was raiding and stuff like that, but I actually thought more people PvP'd, and I was very ignorant. <laughs> and uh, and as I got uh, more and more involved with the, the PvP community, it became very apparent that uh, PvP was second, and that's strictly because more people raid, and that's absolutely fine, and that's awesome, to be honest with you. But I think, personally, I've always felt like the PvP in World of Warcraft W had a lot of potential to become something that people could watch and that was before even and, and the reason why I've always felt that way is because when I was coming up and playing video games throughout like middle school and stuff I loved to go and watch Halo tournaments and Halo competitive gameplay and I used to like go to the conventions where like the best players would would be and I, and I met like I met Final Boss briefly and uh I thought they were gods <laughs> and like things like that and then when I went to World of Warcraft I'm like wow what if the PvP of this game could be like that Halo tournament and even back then I was interested in make in, in, in like helping produce a a tournament for World of Warcraft and uh, eventually I got to and I'm not gonna go into that <laughs> but basically what I'm trying to say is that um, we share this game and we share this game with a lot of different people that do a lot of different things and 
um, it's really hard for us to remember that. And and I, I didn't know, you know, and so, but we need to recognize that as a community and we need to be empathetic towards the developers. And I know I kind of sound like I'm white knighting or whatever. Um, but I think that's something that we forget that there's a lot of different things that they need to take into consideration when it comes to the game. And like, for example, I guess an, a, a relevant example would be warlock buffs that just occurred. Warlocks in PVE needed help. Warlocks, um, uh, affliction warlocks weren't doing enough damage, apparently single target. And I talked to some PVE warlocks and they, they said, yeah, we do need help single target. I can't compete that well. And then we saw you affliction warlock buffs. Now, if you're a PVPer, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're like, what the heck? Warlocks were gods and now they are titans, if you're familiar with WoW lore or whatever. Um, and <laughs> so, yeah, those buffs were crazy. And they instantly heard our cries and they, they reverted them and made them PVP specific. Now, I'm not 100% on this. I've never been told any of this, but I'm assuming that PvP specific uh, buffs and debuffs don't occur nearly as often because um, that adds a complexity to the game and complexity might not always be the best thing for the game because, I mean, we share this game with a lot of people and yes, that means also there's casual players <laughs> and uh, adding complexity to the game does um, actually kind of uh, deter some casual players and I think that that's a double-edged sword to think about yes ca you hear that term catering to casuals all the time but at the same time if more people are playing the game more people are interested in making that 3v3 ladder active you know what I mean so it, it is an important part of the game is making sure that um, the learning curve is accommodating I think that is so important and Blizzard always does a great job with learning curves um, I mean, look at Heroes of the Storm. Like, that MOBA is, like, the, the easiest game ever to pick up, but it's very intricate in the higher levels. So that's absolutely mind-boggling to me. But anyway, um, <laughs> I can't even remember where this rant began. I guess Legion. And basically, they've understood and they heard our cries, and they're separating uh, that PvP aspect of PvE, and we're going to have our own... Uh, PvP talent tree and that is just so exciting to me for so many reasons uh, I mean on a balance level and also uh, on a gameplay level I'm excited to see the abilities that we're going to be able to uh, utilize um, also let's talk a little bit about the gearing so they it's kind of confusing to me um, but it makes a bit of sense so basically they're saying they're getting rid of PvP gear now, everyone's first uh, reaction, it would seem, at least uh, what I like to call the minor, the min the major minority. And what I mean by that is uh, the people who are the loudest but don't necessarily represent everyone. <laughs> the major minority on the forums and stuff like that say that, um, or assume instantly that that means that rating gear is going to be best in slot. And obviously, we've heard from Alinka in that. Um, and during the live broadcast of Cup 3, and the best in slot gear is going to be acquired from PvP for PvP. Um, so that's really cool, but that being said, PvE gear is going to be very similar to uh, the PvP gear if the stats are going to be relatively similar, if not even the same. Um, so that's awesome. And a lot of people might be scared that PvE gear might be better or this and that, and they specifically said that they understand that gearing and gear in PvP shouldn't be a significant part because um, it almost makes it mandatory to be competitive. And that to me, when they were talking about that, made me sigh in relief and made me literally feel weight fall off my shoulders because, I mean, I invest so much of my time in this game competitively. And when I heard that, that is like a big deal <laughs> for a lot of reasons and I'll go into that in a second but um, not only does it uh, does it reduce are they reducing the uh, the importance of gear in PvP but they also are in increasing the accessibility of PvP now majority of this game is not PvPers is not hardcore PvPers and I mean, we talked about that earlier, but think about that. If you're increasing accessibility from the other parts of the game to be able to go into PvP easier because the gear is similar, 
I'm assuming, this is all assuming that the gear is going to be easy to jump in the PvP because the gear will be similar. Uh, that accessibility increase is going to help us grow um, as a PvP community. And growing is always better. More numbers are always better, right? So that got me really excited. <laughs> but um, I was going to say something earlier. I was going to go into something earlier. I forgot. Oh, well. Um, so, I mean, the changes that Legion offer uh, have me so very excited, and I cannot wait to see what's going to uh, happen. But um, something uh, a little bit more relevant, something a little bit more um, closer to home, is that the we recently helped Blizzard out with uh, hosting the online qualifiers, which has been absolutely amazing. Uh, the folks over at Blizzard's are just absolutely awesome and they love what they do and um, working with them and working with other people that are passionate about what what we do <laughs> essentially being passionate about the same thing that we do has been amazing and motivating and I can't wait to get started on more GCD tournaments um, because it's been a while it's been a while but I've been I've actually been enjoying not being on camera <laughs> to be quite honest with you guys I kinda like being behind the scenes a little bit more so maybe I might tap into that a little bit more and maybe get more other people on camera and me just sit back and do my thing but who knows we'll see what happens um, at the same time I have missed being a host as well but Bajira Bajira guys let's let's talk a quick second about cup 3 and Bajira hosting he did an awesome job now a lot of you guys are probably like he was super nervous or this and that and as someone who is very much so understanding of how stressful it can be on a live broadcast let alone the North American online qualifiers broadcast my own little broadcast that I create myself that doesn't have nearly as many viewers um, I've been so nervous and he did an, an amazing job. I'm a sore. <laughs> he did an amazing job for his first time hosting. And I just can't wait to see what comes out of that guy because he is a fantastic representation of the PvP community. So positive. And uh, he gets it, man. He gets it. So uh, I really hope to see that guy uh, hosting more tournaments because if it gets better than that, if he keeps saying that he's going to improve and stuff, I can't wait to see what he's got. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the qualifiers were awesome and we've been getting a lot of feedback regarding, uh, the format of the qualifiers and, uh, um, as you guys probably have guessed, the four mayor, the four player roster that we had in GCD tournaments worked so well that we decided, they decided to use them in their tournaments, which was amazing. And, um, I love the four player roster and, um, now I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys and real with you guys. In an ideal world, I would prefer a three-player roster. In an ideal world, I would think that only having three players in the team would be the best. But World of Warcraft is a tricky monster. Now, personally, my personal opinion, personally, my personal opinion, um, is that players, like the, the most skilled players in the world, aren't players that are master of one class. Player, the most skilled players in the world that deserve the, the best uh, of the best uh, rewards that the competitive arena has to offer are players that are multi uh, monthly classers, not multi boxers, multi classers, and I think that there is a skill ceiling. Maybe not necessarily as compositions or as teams. There's a skill ceiling because that could go on forever. But there is a skill ceiling for individual classes. And I think that players that um, familiarize themselves with other classes should have an advantage. Now that being said, <coughs> Peter Pan. That being said, um, World of Warcraft is a role-playing, multiple, massively multiplayer online game. And what I mean by that is we created a, an avatar. We created a role-playing character. Now, no matter if you're not a role-player or not, you're still creating a character that is going to represent you in the game. So there's a little bit of role-playing no matter how anti-role-playing you are. And to ask these these people who've been playing this one character this one class for years to multi-class to be competitive in the game when they didn't have to for years ago is a struggle and it's a struggle that I've had since GCD number five there was GCD number five we decided to say hey we need multi-classers you guys can only compete if you are a multi-classer so you can sign up but you need this many classes and there's gonna be picks and bands and the negative feedback that we got was so disheartening <laughs> and 
rightfully so. We weren't ready for that. The community wasn't ready for that. And basically what I'm trying to get to is in a perfect world where the top PvPers multi-classed uh, to enough classes that we could allow, we could have them just have three player rosters and but right now I don't think they can and right now I think that we're still going to see like teams that only have one or two compositions and I don't think that's enough to stay competitive I don't think that's enough to prevent yourself from getting countered personally that's why I had the four player rosters and maybe one day the community and uh, the players will adapt when there's enough incentive on the line when I got the bucks rolling um, we'll be able to have three player rosters again because so many players are going to be multi-classing but personally i feel like to prevent hard counters teams needed those four players they needed to be able to have those additional tools to prevent that and i personally feel like even though that we're in the early stages of what's going to become of wild esports and i can promise you that um the four player roster i personally feel was successful and there isn't a single team that qualified for um regionals that I don't think are deserving. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean I, I don't think that there's teams that didn't qualify that aren't deserving. Um, but I'm just saying that the teams that qualified are very talented players. Every single one of them. And, I mean, there's certain players that are already multiclassing like crazy. Like, what the heck? What is Go Recky? Let's, let's talk a, little, a second about Go Recky. Like, that guy plays so many classes. How? How, my brain can't wrap her, like when, I don't know about you guys, but I, I try to multi-class myself because I don't want to, I don't want to preach things I don't practice, right? Um, and I really do try, I, I have like 2200 in like six different classes. Now that being said, <laughs> I need to practice, like if, I, if I'm playing my elemental shaman and I swap over to my retribution paladin, yes, I kind of like keep my buttons up to what does what, like shamanistic rage and wall for paladin are the same button. But still, I need to practice my other class like a few times in a scrim or in a BG to be able to wrap my head around doing that. And so like when pushing rating on these classes, I can only do like two or three classes at a time. But this Gorecki guy, what the heck? He plays everything. It's crazy. And there's a lot of players like that out there, like Snuts and apparently Jamili. Like there's a lot of players out there that have the ability to multi-class. And these are the players that I want to put a spotlight on. These are the players that I want to become... Um, you know, like the fakers of WoW and stuff. So, I'm kind of getting off topic again. I can't not, I can't stay on topic, but eh, this has been my rant so far. And basically, what I'm trying to say is that GCD TV um, is going to be hit or miss until next year. So, obviously, there's going to be, there's going to be EU qualifiers. I think they're still going on. And then there's, there's going to be EU and US regionals. And then there's going to be BlizzCon. And all this is happening relatively quickly. So in um, sneaking in uh, GCD uh, TV tournaments, uh, either between these tournaments, or, or I'm not going to overlap them. So it's going to be a little bit before we have like a consistent schedule of GCD tournaments. But not only that, we've had some awesome opportunities that are going to be taking our time as well. So yeah, yep, yep. We're not going to have consistent GCD tournaments, but the future is bright, guys. We'll leave it at that. So that being said. Um, I do have a Patreon up. Now, I was kind of hesitant to create a Patreon, um, but I think it's awesome now that I see what it, what it does. Because every single week, every single tournament that we've ever hosted, you guys come in with, with the support that is just unbelievable. And every single week, I'm like, oh, well, this week uh, not a lot of teams signed up, or this week not the best team signed up, or we don't have the biggest prize pool this week, and so we're probably not going to get a lot of donations, and I'm proven wrong every time. So with that consistency and that support from you guys, I decided to create a Patreon because the Patreon gives me the ability to reward you guys. Now, if you're donating, like there is individuals that have donated $100 nearly every week. If you're donating $100 and you care that much and you tune in every single week, I think that you should have a word um, in regards to the future of the channel, like GCD TV. I think you, uh, I think that you deserve the ability to have your your voice heard by us. So um, the Patreon is going to allow supporters to communicate one on one with us, and uh, we're going to be like before we announce like big tournaments or new format changes or whatever. We're gonna we're gonna ask you what you think, 
and if you think it's a good idea then uh, or if you want to add something to it we're gonna consider that you know and uh, but not only that there's also if you really want to donate a lot and you have like products and services you can actually become a sponsor right through the patreon and you can um, use your services and products um, to be right on on GCD TV's live broadcast so that's also something really cool now there's also milestones in the patreon like for example if we can reach two hundred and fifty dollars a month which actually I don't even think that we're even gonna get there that's like the minimum goal that I think that we'll reach um, by the end of whenever the patreon ends or whatever or if yeah <laughs> I think that we're gonna hit 250 and that milestone is queue up again queue up is would be back theoretically and uh, it would be better than ever and we'd be able to really talk about uh, the hard-hitting topics that is WoW esports and stuff within World of Warcraft uh, PvP like game balance and stuff like that but also player drama because everyone loves player drama no matter how uh, much you say you don't want to get involved with player drama it is always so interesting I just gotta say it you know it's it, it's interesting stuff and uh, it's also really cool so moving forward GCD TV there's other milestones too you can all check it out in the patreon I'll put a link in the description below I'm not gonna talk too much about it but uh, I guess I'm gonna summarize this because I am going on 20 minutes now I've just been ranting for 20 minutes so hopefully you guys enjoy this video um, so uh, the future of GCD TV is going to include more production uh, we're going to do better production wise um, we're also going to try to increase the amount of teams that compete now it's gonna take a little bit of financial help so give us a bit to collect that and uh, then on top of all of that we also are going to um, incorporate a lot of the format that the qualifiers had in GCD TV so if you're gonna be practicing in GCD TV throughout the year chances are that that same format that you are playing is going to be the same format that you'd be competing at G or at BlizzCon or at the regionals or qualifiers wherever so um, it's gonna help the players get ready you know and uh, but last but not least this is just a murmur but a GCD TV Pro League and now what do I mean by a Pro League I mean the, the prize pool obviously we can't necessarily afford salaries for our players and teams but we can up that prize pool with the right support so that's my goal I'm gonna to try to get sponsored I'm gonna to try to do th this and that to be able to financially support a GCD Pro League um, and that's the end goal right and so uh, but I have a lot of cool ideas like for example uh, you know how in the format there is different uh, times where like for example game one of every single game is Nagrand Arena and then both teams blind pick lock in their compositions now if you guys watch like League of Legends or even Heroes of the Storm tournaments, you'll see like that pick and ban phase. I want a pick and ban phase uh, style look for that format. So, and I also want to help personalize the players because these players have been in the community forever, and I want them to have more of a spotlight on them. I want, um, I want these players to grow their followings because they're really cool people. So, like for example, if uh, for example. Uh, during the pi the pick and phase, um, both teams are trying to lock in their composition in the Grand Arena. Now imagine this. On this side, you have, sorry, we'll start with this side. On this side, you have Team A. And when they lock in their, their composition, you're going to see a picture of the actual player, like his real face, uh, a class icon and a spec icon. And you're going to see three of them for all three of the players, right? And then the same thing on this side, because they're going to lock in at the same time, because it's a blind pick. And then... That and then we'll talk. The casters will talk about uh, what the players and the, the comps and stuff like that. And then game two, there's a loser, so that means that the team gets to choose the map in the middle. So the map will get locked in. That cool little animation right in the middle of the screen. The map will get locked in. And then on the left side, you have uh, the players choosing their. Uh, and then you have like the losers choosing their their or the winners choosing their comp first. And so you see them lock in, and then you see the losers lock in. And like you'll be able to see their faces, you'll be able to see the class icons and stuff like that. And I just think that that would be really cool. Uh, so you guys would be interacting with the process because honestly, as an admin uh, for the qualifiers, I saw how cool that process was. I saw how awesome the mind games were. Because if you think about it, the way that the the the, the format works is that 
um, the losing team chooses the map first. The map's locked in first, and that's announced to both teams. So with that map choice, the winning team could actually kind of guess what the losing team was going to play, uh, looking at the, the roster and what compositions they have available to them. And that's a mind game. So that, the, the winning team or that losing team has to take that in consideration when choosing their map. So like if they have like a cleavy team, like a double melee team, they can't choose Ruins of Order on because that'd be obvious. There's a lot of like intricate little things like that that I really want to put a spotlight on because WoW arenas are very, very interesting. And uh, I think that I think that the, for the format that we currently are using really does highlight that well. Um, all right. All right. I'm going to stop talking. It's been 25 minutes. If you guys enjoyed this video or just thought it was silly or I should just do something else because I do want to start creating consistent content, uh, please let me know. And uh, with a thumbs up or a thumbs down or comment, comments would probably be ideal uh, so I can pick your brain as specific as each individual's opinion is. But uh, thank you guys for listening. If you are still here 25 minutes or 26 minutes into this video listening to me just talk, I salute you. D-Machine Blast Off. I'll see you guys around. Tournament number 21. Signups are open. Go sign up right now. Thanks. See you guys later.